as we look at God's word this morning, oh, by the way, did I greet you? Greetings. Good morning, church. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be focusing on this, which is our theme this year. You, do you remember our theme this year? It's about what? Yes, it's forgetting about the past, not dwelling on the past, but straining towards the future. So you might say, ah, but we've talked about this before. No, let's keep hammering it until it really settles in our, in our hearts, in our lives. Shall we together then read uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, just those uh, two verses. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which is clear. You definitely want us to forget what is behind and then move on to the goal that you have stayed for us heavenward. And so this morning, Lord, I pray that you help us just to understand this even much deeper than we have done before. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Yes, it has been preached before. I think uh, our pastor shared very eloquently on this subject. And then even following on from that, we had that week of prayer. I mean, it was really coming from all angles that uh, we just need to forget what is behind and then focus on what is ahead of us. So there's no harm in repeating this. Actually, I picked a leaf uh, from what Paul himself said. In the same chapter, verse 18, he says, For I have often told you before, and now I say again, even with tears. Can you see that? For I have often, or some people say often, it doesn't matter, told you before, and now I say it again, even with tears. But today I'm not necessarily shedding a tear, but I'm just repeating what we need to know about forgetting what is in the past and then moving on. So from the passage that we read, we will center around the, uh, these two issues, forgetting what is behind and moving on, straining towards what is ahead. Notice that Paul did not simply say, forget what is behind you or what is past and leave it there. Otherwise, there would be a vacuum. He urges us to do something. So forget what is past, 180 degrees, forge forward. Now, just some quick observations before we proceed on these two issues. Number one is that Paul, in verse 12 and 13, He's actually not talking about salvation when he says, I have not really attained it. But rather, he's talking about his walk in his Christian life, attaining perfection, attaining maturity. That's what Paul is talking about here as we go back and read those verses. In fact, in verse 10, just the verse before that, he says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. So for Paul, that was his real desire to say, I really want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and then appropriate that for his own. And he says, I have not attained it. And you know, number three is that uh, he does not end there, but he's pressing on towards the goal in order to win the prize. And you know that a prize is something that you work for. You work hard to earn a prize, but salvation is free. We do not work hard to end salvation. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse um, 8 and 9, Paul, the same Paul emphasizes that uh, salvation is free, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is not out of our works. It is a gift of God. And somewhere in um, 
uh, uh, Romans chapter 3, is it 3 or 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So eternal life, salvation is free. We don't work for it. That's what the Bible teaches. And it's also important to note verse 15. Verse 15 says, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too, God will make it clear to you. I like that. Uh, Paul, being such a mature Christian, he knows that sometimes when he shares something with his uh, congregation, there were some who have something different. But he's saying, for those of you who are mature, who take a different view of this? He doesn't argue with them. You know what he does? He simply says, that too, God will, take, will make it clear for you. I used to argue on some of the things, eh? When you are still growing up, you think, yeah, this is a real point, and then you really make such a big argument. But when time goes on, you learn that, hey, actually, I shouldn't even have done that because it was actually me who was immature at the time. So let's give room for that, and that's what Paul is teaching for that. But anyway, let's go back to the issue of forgetting of what is behind. I think it is important to emphasize, really emphasize, that what is gone in the past is gone. It won't repeat itself, it will not come again in the future. What is in the past is in the past is gone, it's done. Whether good or bad, the past has got no bearing with the future. I know it's difficult because we still remember some of the things in the past, whether good or bad. But what Paul is encouraging us here is forget the former things. Put them behind, but move on to what is ahead of you. You see, we can only learn from the past if we are wise or if we are clever. Otherwise, it really has got no bearing for the future. What has gone will never come back, no matter how good or bad. You know, it's like when you pour water accidentally or a drink on the floor, it will never come back. It's gone. And in my language, we've got a saying or a proverb which speaks to that, to say when, when water is gone, then it's gone. And I'm sure even in your languages, you might have these proverbs. I'm sure there must be one in Yoruba, definitely. And in Setswana, maybe if we talk, once water is gone, it's gone. You can't retrieve it. Something, when it is broken, yes, you may try to mend, but it is broken still. It will never be as original as it ever was. So... We even have names given to people, just to, to remind ourselves. In my family, my brother-in-law, his surname is Mazaka Peter. What it means is Mazaka Peter Saoleka. What that means is when water goes, it is gone. You will never have it back. So we have these things just to remind us, to emphasize the same thing that, guys, no matter how good your past was, no matter how good or how bad your past was, it's done. There's nothing more that you can do about it. You cannot undo it. And that's what Paul is encouraging us to do here. There are even songs that are sung. In my country, one guy came up. He says, uh, it's a very nice tune. Eh? You can really dance a lot from that. He says, uh, you know what it means? I'm sure you're understanding this. <laughs> if the past had to come back, some will be crying, some will be rejoicing, and so unfortunately it won't come back. I think there is something good in that. Now, some of you, your past are really terrible. Well, maybe including mine. You would even want, if it were possible, if you could, you could even pay a million dollars to make sure that your past is completely wiped out. But unfortunately, it won't happen. 
It won't happen. But Paul, what he's saying is, forget what is in the past, forge ahead, and see what God is, uh, what is God is doing. Have you not met people who, they always talk about how good the past is. Oh, you know, in those days, you know, we used to live in a very nice house. Meanwhile, they are in a two and a half somewhere in a lady there somewhere. But they keep talking about what it used to be. We used to travel a lot, you see, in those days. They can keep going on and on talking to you about what they were doing in the past. But yeah, but what about now? What is happening? What is the future? For some people who spend their time telling you how bad their past is, what sort of things happened, how people mistreated them, that's all they talk about these days. No, no, no. Life, life is moving on. I see life more like a conveyor belt. You know what a conveyor belt is? I don't know how to describe it. A conveyor belt which is always forward going but never, it doesn't have a reverse gear. So what it is is something, what is a conveyor belt? Uh -huh. Okay, if you go to the mines, some, some belt, you know, it goes. Okay, if, okay you, you, you go to the airport, all right? When, when, the, when your luggage is coming out, they put on something and then it moves, okay? All right, no, you may not get it. Let me give you another... Let me give you another example. What about the staircases, these moving staircases? You call them escalators, right? It's forward moving, and you see, it doesn't reverse, because if they want to go the opposite direction, they give you another one, all right? That's how life is. I joined that conveyor belt somewhere around 17 June 1962. And I'm going to get off that conveyor belt. It will never stop. It's always going forward. My brother here, his conveyor belt is at 70. He's reached a mark of 70 somewhere, still going forward. Even if he wanted to say, but I liked just that one year. Please, can I reverse and go back? Francis and uh, maybe Mavis, you remember, uh, some two Christmases ago, we, we were dancing somewhere about no reverse. Eh? You remember? Where is Francis? No reverse, no reverse. Because that's what life is, always moving forward. But some people, and this is about life, but it applies also to the script, uh, uh, spiritual lives. We need to see growth in what we are doing. Some people always tell you, in those days, we used to go and have crusades, you know, and people were getting saved. Yeah, but what about now? In those days, we used to pray for people and they would get saved. Yes, but that is in the past. And I like this because even Jesus himself doesn't allow, he doesn't entertain these things that, when things are really nice, you are at the peak of your spiritual whatever, and then you build a castle there, and then you start celebrating. You remember during the time of uh, transfiguration? If you can imagine if Jesus said yes to those three that he was going to build a, a, a booth, you know what the scripture, I mean, the, the life would have, would have lost Peter, John, and James? Because during that time, what he saw, it was just the peak of the glory of God. And what did they say? Please, can you allow us just to build a booth so that we enjoy this glory? But Jesus didn't say yes. In fact, he said, you don't know what you are talking about. You are going back because I've got more work for you to do. So let's not sit there. And in fact, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a new way in the wilderness and streams in the, well, uh, in the wasteland. That's what God is in the business of doing, is always bringing in something new, always doing something new for us. Paul himself, in this passage that we have just read, if we had a chance to read right from verse 1, 
In verse 2 to 6, he's bragging about how good or what he himself had done. He was saying, if there was something for me to boast about in this Christian life, I think I've got the best, you know, boasting to do. But in verse uh, uh, 7 to 8, he said this, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I lost all things. Him, what matters most is this, that he needs, uh, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as his Lord. That's what matters to him. So as a result, he considered everything else garbage that he may gain Christ. That's why we need to forget about the former things and then look forward because that's where uh, God is taking us. You see, if we continue to look at the past, we've got good reasons. In fact, people have been mistreated. There are real tragedies that have happened in the past. But we need to move on. How many people do you know of such who their lives were really messed up, they were a total wreck? But that was the past and then the future changed completely. That's what God wants us to do. When we were doing the, um, um, the Tabas, they were doing a TV show, yeah, which is coming up. Actually, I would really encourage you to say when it starts airing on BTV, you really need to set a time and watch this. Because during one of the shootings, I, uh, my wife and I joined in, and then on that episode, there's a, a lady who is giving an, um, uh, a testimony about how she was abused in her marriage. Very much that she was beaten up and then she tried to run away, but uh, you know, parents, they say, no, go back and stuff like that. She, was, she ended up actually being shot eight times in the head with a bullet, yeah? but for some reason, somehow she survived. And then, um, as life goes on, she even, there was an attempt to take her life by the family of the husband as well. And there was re evidence that this was it and it was a police case. But this woman went ahead and stopped that police case and simply said, I forgive them. I mean, how can somebody who is sane, somebody who was mistreated like that, managed to say that is in the past, it has happened. I'm not denying, but I've got a future to live. And she's able even to forgive such kind of people. This is what Paul is talking to us about. Just recently, one of my relatives, a very young, sweet girl, and she's looking forward to life and she's busy building up in her career. One of the days, uh, the house where she was in was uh, broken into by, ooh, let's call thieves or whatever. And yet it was such a secure compound. And unfortunately, she was alone that day and they ended up abused and really wrecked her life. Now, you should have seen how angry I was when I heard that story. But I was here. There was nothing that I could do. And this young lady has the whole future ahead of her. And I pray that God will give her the courage to say, this has happened, it's in the past. There's nothing I can do about it. What matters now is what is the future saying? and then move on. Otherwise, if you sit on that conveyor belt, it's still moving, you turn and then you look behind and you just sit and start mourning about what has happened, you are still moving. You see signs going on, January, February, March. 
and then you reach December, you are still focusing on what has happened to you in the past. But you are not the same. You are approaching 70 years, no? You are even going beyond that. Why? Life is moving on. Paul is saying, forget about the former past. God is able. Why? Because he is so faithful. God is so faithful. He does new things all the time. Lamentations 3 verse 22 and 23 says, because of, the God's, of, because of God's love, we are not consumed. For his compassions or his mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Do you know that verse? Do you know that there is a song that we sing? What does, how does it go? The faithfulness. Yeah, that's how the 70 year olds sing. But it's a different way how we do it. But God is good, He is faithful. They are new every morning. This God who says, forget about the former things, move on in future, what he's saying is he's doing new things all the time. Do you know that every day is different? It will never be the same. And his blessings, his uh, faithfulness, his compassions, his mercies are new every morning. It doesn't matter what has happened to you. I'm not denying that you've had a tough time before. Some of you, 2019, you don't even want to hear anything to do with 2019. But some of us are actually glad, hey, 2019, I wish we could be like in 2019 because you got a promotion or this thing happened to you and all the rest of it. We, but don't dwell there. That's what Paul is talking about. Let's move on. The next thing is you strain towards the future. You are straining towards this future. Now, that word, since it is English, I had to check up in the dictionary. So this is what the dictionary says. To strain is to force a part of one's body or oneself to make an unusually great effort. That's what straining is about. So when Paul says, do not live in the past, but move on in the future, what he was talking about is this, that it is straining. In fact, other uh, translations use the word stretching, stretching in the future, or reaching forward, or reaching forth. Hence, he's using these other examples of, uh, uh, as an athlete and the like. So what Paul is telling us here, that once you have put your past behind, don't stay put. Turn 180 degrees and then move forward because God is doing a new thing. Straining, it's not easy. That's what is basically meaning. It's hard, it's difficult. God has given us two eyes. Those two eyes are in front and not on the sides. Yeah? There are some animals that have got eyes this way. They look this way and the like. God in his design of us, he put these two eyes in front so that we are always focusing in future. The only people who are gifted with another eye at the back are mothers. I don't know how they manage to see <laughs> what their children are doing when they are not even there. Even their husbands, they are able to know what they are doing when they are not there. Those are the only exceptions. But otherwise, the rest of us, we've got two eyes in front. We have to go future. Now, if I'm going this way in the future, and then I keep turning like that, it won't make sense. You, you, you will strain yourself for nothing and it will not work for long. You have to turn completely if you want to look this way. But you remember this conveyor belt is going this way. You miss out whatever is coming out in front of you. This is the secret that God has given us. 
Now we have to strain towards the future. Paul did not say you lazy around or waiting or you drift along. You cannot drift along towards righteousness. That much I can assure you. You drift away towards disaster. And that's what most of us are doing. Why? Because we are not straining towards the future. It's not easy, but God does help us. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, 29, Paul says, He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend. Some other translations say, To this end, I labor with all the energy Christ is so powerfully works in me. This is Paul talking that he strenuously contend in order to present everyone as mature in Christ. So it's not easy. That's what we need to understand. Spiritual growth is not easy. It does not come on a silver platter. Some people once you become Christians or the like, they will tell you, oh, life will be rosy, everything will be nice. In fact, you stop suffering and all these things. It's a lie. Run away from such people. Because that's not what we are promised. Salvation is free, yes, but the life of godliness is not free. We work on it. We strain towards righteousness. To become like Christ-like is not easy. It, you don't float along. You work hard. So it requires focus. It requires focus. It requires discipline. And even denying ourselves if we have to grow to maturity. The very thing that Paul was crying out in his congregation. Paul further gives other examples uh, in um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 7. He says, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one, saving as a soldier, gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather he tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive uh, a, the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Verse 6, the hardworking farmer, he just doesn't say the farmer. He says the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on all what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. The examples Paul is giving here, as you can see, don't get entangled in civilian affairs if you really want to be mature in Christ. You have to separate yourself. There are some things you have to say no to and be disciplined enough. An athlete, these guys practice. What we see on the field there, I don't know uh, whether you watched this, I don't know where Kenyans come from, I don't know whether it's this world. There's this Kenyan guy, I've forgotten his name, but he has broken another record that he, he ran the marathon in less than two hours. Did you, not, did you see that? Did you notice that for some of us who are athletes? Now, all what I was seeing on the TV was this guy running in a marathon in less than that. But to be honest with you as an athlete, he says he spends hours and hours practicing on the field, beating his body and all the rest of it. But those who are us, and we just see that, that he's finishing, he has made it, not knowing how much he has gone through himself. This is what an athlete does, and Paul is telling us about the same thing. What about the hardworking farmer? These guys have got faith, man. Farmers, they don't wait for 
the rains to start falling. They prepare the ground. They till in faith. The hard-working farmer is the one. So, the same with your spiritual life. It will not come easy. You work on it. That's what discipleship is all about. Now, that works. Spiritual growth will only come in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be around him for you to grow. You remember Martha and Mary, the other time Jesus came, the other one was busy doing other things, but the other one says he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's all what we need to do, sit at his feet. And it's not easy. We've got lots of distractions these days. But that's what we need to do. But not only that, as we focus on Christ, we also need to be in the company of the godly men and women who have gone ahead of us. Verse 17 of the same chapter, it says, Join others in following my example, brothers and sisters, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. This is Paul. He's following Christ, but he's saying also, follow me. Join others in following me. So we grow by hanging around Jesus, not these other places, and also where godly men and women are. During our discipleship uh, sessions, guys, those were real enjoyable times, I can assure you. So I hope the whole church today will sign up. But um, Ma Yang gave an example uh, uh, one day, which I found very profound. Uh, she said, you see, even with children, when you are, uh, we've got, you may have so many, but maybe there might be just one who usually hangs around with the mom, maybe in the kitchen. He's the one or she's the one who would pick up a lot of things. Because as you do things, you are working on these stories come up and then you start shaping and the like, you find that they end up knowing more. Why? By simply hanging around mom or dad. That's when you pick up things. But staying in your room with your headphones on and then on Facebook, you will not pick up skills from the mom. I thought, that's true. And even with our Christian work, we need to hang around Jesus, you know, and those who are godly, and then we will learn. Discipleship is about being together, learning for those, from those who have gone ahead of us. Last week, I was uh, at a garage. One of our friends uh, uh, mends or fixes cars, so I went there to have one of our scrocolos fixed. So... I was quite impressed to see there's a young boy who is about four, I think three, four. Uh, he hangs around the dad when he's, you know, dealing with these issues of cars. So I was observant to see, fortunately, they work together as a family. The, the, the lady also helps out there, and then the young man was running around. So he says, you know, this boy, he knows a lot about cars much more than I do, actually. And she even knows, and uh, it was me now, says, he, it seems like he looks even know about brake pads. Mom Ruth, you don't know what a brake pad is, but this young, <laughs> this young boy, three, four, he knows what a brake pad is for a car. Why? He hangs around his dad as he's doing these things, and so he's learning the trade. He knows about cars much more than, in fact, his favorite car, I understand, is a Ford Ranger. And you know what? I was so happy how prophetic that was coming from a young man like that one. Eh? <laughs> God wants us to hang around him, Jesus. That's when we can grow and mature in our walk with him. But doing other things, ah, no, it won't work. So that's what discipleship is all about. Forgetting what is behind. Yes, things happened. I'm not denying and I'm not trying to play it down. They did happen. But there's nothing more you can do about it. They happened, they've happened. You cannot erase that. What is important is to turn. 
follow where the conveyor belt is coming in, and you will see the new things that the Lord is bringing your way. You will be able to grow in your walk with the Lord. In conclusion, therefore, in 2020, as we move forward, why don't you decide and make a decision today to say, yes, I'm cutting off. From now onwards, I will not dwell on the past anymore. No matter how sweet it was, it will never be. No matter how bad it is, the future is what matters. And it will be different. And it is new every day. So, forget what is behind. Straining towards the future, what is ahead of us. And pressing on toward the goal in order to win the prize. So that we'll be presented as mature Christians before our Lord Jesus. May we rely on God alone to help us to soldier on in the future. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same who knows the past, who knows the present, and who knows the future. No matter how bad our, our past has been, Lord, even the sins that we have committed, you say if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, and that you forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, your word says, you forgive our sins and remember them no more. And therefore, there is no reason why we should hang and dwell on the past. Lord, not even those things that you have done in our lives which are good. Where we have experienced your power, where we have experienced your sweetness, we just need to soldier on and move forward. Lord, help us not to be distracted. Help us not to be entangled with the cares of this world, but that we will focus on you. And if there is anyone who would like to start that new journey now, God is available. If you want to give your life to the Lord today and say, yes, I want to give up all my past and start afresh, Jesus is here. And you can pray and ask him to come into your life, to forgive your sins, to forget your past and then move on. Lord, have mercy. Help us that we may do so. In Jesus' name, amen.